government under Mr. Narendra Modi has been very aggressive in its foreign policy, and uh, you know they have always labeled uh, Pakistan as a terrorist state uh, for his initial uh, period of prime ministership. Mr. Modi, uh, when he was visiting various countries in the world, was trying to get a consensus on on um, this issue. Uh, he wanted the countries of the world to declare Pakistan a terrorist state, but a lot of these countries, um, including China, were not willing to do that. And the fact is that Pakistan is as much a victim of terrorism, probably more uh, than India. It is true that it is source of a lot of terrorism, but it is also true that it pays a heavy price for it. Um, probably it doesn't know how to handle it, and and. Uh, um, we saw how uh, Osama bin Laden was was ultimately traced down to Pakistan and eventually killed by the U.S. Uh, security forces. Uh, so it is a haven for for a lot of terrorists. But then uh, we don't know how much control Pakistan has over these these uh, forces. Um, but it gives an excuse to countries. <clears throat> to build up their security apparatus uh, in the name of protecting uh, them from terrorism, and uh, and occasionally there are um, you know terrorist incidents uh, which justify the government's policy of investing more in arms, um, increasing the defense budget. Uh, so this is what we have been witnessing for the last. Uh, uh, you know, uh, so many years, um, and especially um, you know during the BJP governments, because they are more belligerent towards, uh, especially Pakistan, um, and and uh, you know um, you they have been they have entered uh, into uh, 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 an agreement to conduct joint military exercises uh, with Israel, <coughs> with United States. Uh, they have been buying arms from all over the all over the world, uh, and uh, had it not been for the Galwan incident, where uh, India paid a heavy price as twenty of its soldiers were killed uh, after um, a truce, which was in place for a long time. India and China had an agreement that they would not, their soldiers would not fire uh, on each other. Uh, but in spite of this, uh, China. Uh, you know, advanced into the Indian territory. There was clash between the soldiers, and 20 Indian soldiers died. We don't know how many died on the Chinese side. There are no confirmed reports. Um, but uh, the uh, stalemate with China continued for a long time, and apparently now there is some kind of uh, of uh, truce um, where uh, the countries have decided to respect. The the border, um, which is called the uh, line of actual control, uh, and and simultaneously, um, a very surprising thing has happened is that India has also uh, called for truce truce with Pakistan, and 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 for some time now at least, uh, there is ceasefire with both Pakistan and and China. Uh, but the government has been using this issue of nationalism and especially uh, militaristic nationalism to to divert the attention of people from its neoliberal economic policies. Uh, if you look at the current Indian government's budget, it is almost like a like a uh, you know a sale list of assets that the government of India has. It wants to sell everything from banks. To, to airports, to the the official Indian government airline, um, to even even the uh, defense establishments like the ordnance factories, and and let me also mention at this point that Modi government uh, is also uh, uh, the one which took initiative to open the defense sector and the insurance sector for private capital for the first time in India, and. Uh, Everybody knows that they bought uh, Rafale um, jet aircraft from France, but at the same time, Mr. Modi was also influential in in helping uh, 
his uh, his uh, businessman colleague, uh, Mr. Anil Lambani, get a contract to manufacture Rafael jets. It's a different matter that uh, Mr. Ambani doesn't have any experience in making uh, making aircrafts or or any defense items. But uh, uh, these uh, uh, this uh, emotional issue of uh, militaristic nationalism has been used by government of India to hide a number of things, to divert attention from a number of its anti-people policies. And one after another, they took a number of decisions, which included uh, demonetization, uh, imposition of uh, goods and services tax, uh, bifurcation of Jammu and Kashmir state into two union territories. The, the uh, status of the state was downgraded to union territories and uh, the Citizenship Amendment Act and the National Register of Citizens, uh, which evoked uh, uh, protest from the general people, mainly Muslim women. And now the farmers uh, uh, are protesting against the three farm laws, which have been brought by this government. And the, for, for the first time, the Modi government is, is facing a challenge where uh, it, in spite of having used all tactics of trying to defame the movement, of trying to divert the attention, uh, trying to label it as uh, as uh, violent, uh, and it is very funny that at the same time they decided to glorify a very violent incident from the Indian history, that of uh, the Chori Chora, where uh, people had burned a police station and 22 policemen were also burned along with it. Uh, they they honored the people who participated in that event, but um, in spite of all the uh, tactics that the government has adopted to divert people's attention, um, it somehow is unable to uh, manage the farmers' movement. And we hope that uh, the farmers' movement uh, will succeed and eventually change the course of Indian policy making from pro corporate to pro people. And hopefully, uh, our democracy will survive uh, because there was a looming danger uh, that the government will will uh, it had already started ignoring a number of things in the Indian Constitution, and it appeared as if the con Constitution did not mean anything for them, and and uh, it has um, uh, it has very little regard for for democratic processes. For example. Uh, the farm laws itself were pushed through the upper house of the parliament without any debate or without any voting, in spite of protests from the opposition and peace. So uh, we are at a very crucial juncture in our history where the people for once in six years uh, are in a position to, uh, to uh, tell the government that this is not how they will be allowed to run the country. Thank you. <clears throat>